Hi people, this is Daniel from Devil and Sons Guitars here and today we're looking at using Montana Gold spray paints on your guitar. Now Montana is a brand of spray paints and the gold is one of their range of spray paints. And what's great about it is there's so many different colours and what I've discovered is that I can use them on guitars and put a nitro or a poly finish on top and the colour stays perfectly. They're really great for doing block colours. You can also use them for doing things like sunburst effects or other details. But one thing I do find there is because the paint can potentially be a bit powdery, there's a certain way that you have to paint them to make sure that the colour really works and really stays and doesn't come off when you're sanding and buffing. So this video is gonna focus on how you can do that. Now here I am in my spray booth. I'm giving my guitar body the last clean with a tack rag to get the dust off after I've prepped and primed the body. We're jumping in here just to talk about the Montana paints, but if you're interested in how you go through taking paint off your guitar if you're repainting it or how you prime and prep your guitar if you're doing that or starting from scratch I do have other videos about that in this series so please do go and check them out but as I said we're going to be jumping straight ahead to using the Montana Gold itself but the tack rag here basically gets off any dust that might be there from the prep stage. Now for this guitar I'm using a yellow paint I absolutely love the colour ranges, as I've said already in this video. But what I'm making sure I do is start around the edges, because I find on any paint that you're using, it's really the edges that wear thinnest when you sand it. And with Montana, you definitely need extra sanding. So I'm doing one coat of the edges before I do the, the actual front and back of the body. And you'll see that I'll probably go over the edges again for each coat. So what I'm doing is making sure my spray can is about a hand's width away from the guitar body. A hand width is what I find is quite good for these paints for making sure they settle. Further away and they become more powdery on the surface. But powdery is a problem that we are going to encounter with these if we're not careful. Now one thing that I'm doing here is I'm doing a coat of paint where I spray both in lines that go from left to right, so horizontal lines, and then up and down, so vertical lines on my body. And I'm gonna call one coat of paint a whole covering in both horizontal and vertical lines. So just going in one direction is the coat, you've gotta be in both directions to get the coat. And you'll see that with one coat, it's not that solid a color. Now that's partly because of the yellow and the yellow being a quite a translucent paint, but it's also partly to do with the paint itself. And also one thing about these cans is you can change the nozzle on it to change the spray width and the spray pattern. I'm just using the spray nozzle that this can came with, but you may want to experiment and discover that there's some that you're more happy using. I would say a fine nozzle that does a very fine spray is not as good as a wide nozzle. One great thing about these paints is they dry very quick. So I tend to leave about 10 minutes between each coat. And at this stage, what we're really after is three coats of paint. So we've watched one in real time. Let's see two more, just sped up, just so you can see the technique I'm using. I have talked about technique in previous videos in this series. One thing about these cans is they do tend to spatter a bit if your can is not totally vertical. So as soon as you start getting horizontal, so spraying down in any way, it can spatter and leave little dots, which isn't so much of a problem when you're doing one matte coat because we're gonna do a few coats and sand it down. And by the time you put the varnish on, you will not notice that at all. But it is a problem if you're doing details, textures and patterns on it, in which case, you need to make sure that the sanding comes from the varnish that you put on afterwards. Now, I've mentioned more about this in my video that's specifically about Spray Max 2K varnish, which I think is probably my varnish of choice for using on top of these Montana Gold paints. I've talked about how you might put them on if you've got one matte color and how you put this varnish on if you've got details and patterns. But this video is specifically about just putting the color on. There we've had it, I've done my three coats. 
And now my job is to give it a wet sand to try and buff out any of the lumps that are on it. Now the thing about Montana paint is it really clogs up the paper really quickly so I get through quite a lot of paper but I'm using 800 grit here to sand down and making sure I'm using some water as well. Not too wet, you don't want to soak your guitar. And what you'll see at the moment, because it's still the first three coats, especially with this yellow, is it's not so even across it. Again, I wouldn't necessarily say Montana paints are the best paints for painting your guitar, but it's a shame not to talk about the Montana gold paints because there's such a range of colors and they're so accessible to get that I, I actually think it's worth the effort of doing the extra coats to use them. Plus they do dry so quick that it is fine. And once you've got that 2K spray max over the top, absolutely brilliant. So obviously I've sanded it down, I've cleaned it up, and now I'm just using my tack rag again to get rid of any of the lumps before going in with my final coats over the top. I will speed up these videos. What we see is I'm going around the edges again to make sure they're nice and thick so they don't wear through. And then I'm working over the body. In this case, it might only need one extra coat, but there's no harm in giving two or three more. As long as they're not too thick, you're just thinking about going horizontally and vertically on one pass for one coat. The thicker it is, the longer it's gonna to take to dry. And if you put it on really thick, you're gonna have problems with drying underneath the surface. So I 100% recommend the 10 minutes between each coat to dry, no more than three coats before you sand, and then come back if you're doing your new coats after sanding, leave it a day and then leave it a few days to properly dry out before you put your spray max on. Great, well, thanks for watching. Do let me know below if you use spray max paints or what other paints you recommend. So if you're someone that's here watching this video because you're interested in putting color on your guitar, check out the comments to see what other people recommend. As I've said already in this video, I don't necessarily think Montana Gold's the best paint to use to paint your guitar, but it's a paint you can't ignore because there are so many colors available. And if you want to give a sunburst finish with a range of colors on it, you've got so much to choose from. But it needs that top coat. It absolutely needs the top coat. And if you're doing one matte color, it needs the sand before the top coat. If you're doing a graduated color or some sort of design on it, you need to be really careful not to sand it, but to put the top coat on and sand that. So you're sanding that smooth and not sanding away any of your design of the paint. But more on that in my 2K Spray Max video, which if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link for just here. If you're not, go and check it out on YouTube so you can see that link. Also, I'll put a link in the description to the playlist that covers all of the stages of painting and priming your guitar. Until next time, happy strumming. <laughs>